Good evening. I'm Mayor Ashton Hayward. For the past two years, I have delivered a very traditional State of the City address. Well, tonight, I want to defy convention, shake things up a little, and try something different. After the charter passed, it signified a new direction for the city of Pensacola. For me, the race was about a new generation that wanted to lead. The citizens wanted more out of their city. The status quo was just not good enough anymore. With your support, I knew that I had ideas that would help Pensacola to secure a greater share of the future. In 2011, I took office with a set of 20 common sense solutions focusing on the city's most pressing needs, creating jobs, restoring trust, taking action, and improving neighborhoods. I am more than halfway through my first term. I am accountable to you, the citizens, for results. You have heard me say that I like to get in the end zone and score a lot. Well, since I have come into office, there have been a lot of wins. In November, we will be updating the City of Pensacola's website, making it more interactive and easier to use for citizens. I will be placing a digital scorecard on our city's website where you can review my performance. I have taken action on all the solutions from my original platform. Promises I made, promises I kept. Now it's time to reach higher, raise the bar, and travel upward. In Pensacola, you know, you could not ask for a more receptive audience and a more receptive community to things like art, music, painting, sculpture, all of it that's here. It's a very exciting place to work. I think many people in Pensacola have discovered the same thing I discovered, which is we had a lot of unknowns when we came here. It wasn't a community that, that we were particularly familiar with. And yet Pensacola is filled with people like me who came here with unknowns and found amazing opportunities and have stayed and have grown both personally and professionally in this town. It's worked out extremely well for myself and for many others. There's a real feeling in Pensacola of pride in the community, and certainly that translates into pride in the arts organizations. And I think all of the arts organizations enjoy that ground level support. It has progressed to be such a, a sort of culturally progressive and culturally aware place that it's really exciting to be part of all that. And I think the most exciting aspect of that is this sense that it's just the beginning, that it really can go, go anywhere from here. I mean, between the location, the climate, the facilities, the people that are beginning to come here, that have been coming here for a long time, um, it is, there's really a sense of optimism, a sense that, that you know, really there's nothing that would stop us from going right to the top. IHMC is a place where scientists and engineers work collaboratively to develop advanced technologies that enable humans and machines to work more closely together. Key determinant for success of any business that's driven by the quality of its people, and I would claim that's every business, is your ability to recruit, your ability to bring the most talented people to where you are. I think Pensacola offers a lot, particularly, it's particularly attractive to high tech uh, and the more high-tech, the better. This is a great place to recruit scientists and engineers. The Institute's success has sort of been coupled with the success of Pensacola, and particularly the downtown. So for us to continue to recruit the most talented people and bring them to Pensacola, it's important that Pensacola become better and better. And as it gets better, which it has, it makes my job easier. So right now, recruiting is quite easy. I think a lot of uh, talented people that can live anywhere they choose to live seek authenticity in today's digital world, or sort of a plastic world. Authentic experiences and authentic places are increasingly rare. And Pensacola is indeed authentic. There's a sense of optimism in Pensacola and a sense that although it's good now, better days even are coming. And so people like being a place that's on a trajectory up. So I strongly recommend it as a place to build a business, particularly a high-tech organization where you really have to get the very best people. I think it, that's an advantage being here. I started my own company, the Studer Group, and we've been around for a little over 12 years now. 
We're a performance improvement company, and what we do in is to healthcare systems and many systems and we literally help them improve their performance. We don't need money, we didn't need incentives, I understand those things, but really it was talent. In order to grow a company, the most important thing you need is human capital. And what we've always found a wealth of in this community is talented individuals to work. Almost everything we do fits into either economic development or education, which ties into somebody's overall quality of life. And I think, you know, and it's a community that, that benefits from it, and it's a community where um, I, I think it's um, sort of not hard to do because people are so dang appreciative. You know, one of the big investments we made here, Pensacola's Waterfront Stadium, that was a pure private-public partnership um, with the city of Pensacola and, and the people of Pensacola because it was a vote, and so they voted to move the city forward, which I think is really neat when the city votes that way, whether it be the stadium, whether it be a strong mayor, that they want to move. I think it just showed, one, community support for a product. One, they're willing to invest in it with the approval, and they have the talent to work it and then they, of course, have the enthusiasm to support it. Ashton, I want to take this opportunity to thank you and your team for all you are doing to create an environment in Pensacola that is conducive to job growth. Uh, from the revitalization of downtown to you being Pensacola's biggest cheerleader out looking for jobs, we certainly appreciate that. Um, that's why we have 3,300 employees here and 400 that are coming from headquarters over the next year. And for all of your efforts and your team's efforts, we appreciate the part you've played in economic development in Pensacola. Well, good evening, and thank you all for coming. Together, we have laid the foundation for meaningful work to come. We have proven to ourselves we can compete and we can win. The next few years will be about how we seize opportunity. Now is the time to use the positive momentum of our successes to push forward, reach upward. Tonight, I wanna to share my ideas for using this rising tide to lift all citizens. Our challenge is to empower people to create, think, and work. I believe most people are proud to work. This is the reason I see economic development as the number one priority for securing a greater share of the future for Pensacola. Work is powerful. A great job brings self-respect, self-reliance, service, and a stronger sense of community. Optimism goes hand in hand with great jobs. You're going to hear a lot about optimism tonight. Together, we can do a great deal to provide the foundation for economic development. From the office of the mayor, we will drive our resources, our time, our talent, our influence, our relationships, and our expertise toward economic development. Supporting job creation and job creators in our targeted industries ensuring we get back our share of the tax dollars we send to Tallahassee and Washington, promoting workforce education in our targeted industries, pushing transparent, streamlined business processes, maximizing existing city assets, and exploiting Pensacola International Airport as an economic development engine, reducing crime, and taking our shared prosperity west is the underpinning for economic development. If we work together and focus our efforts across these dimensions, we will create a city where everyone has an opportunity to be successful. Everyone will have optimism. Each of these components individually is important, but when you bring them together, you create strength, synergy, upward momentum. An essential element of successful economic growth is a collaborative spirit across our entire region. The 16 counties of Northwest Florida making up our region must work together to compete for business growth and jobs. We have three deep water seaports, the I-10 corridor connecting the Southeast, four great airport facilities, rail connections to CSX, and a unique concentration of military bases encompassing all branches of service. 
We share common interests and common potential for future prosperity. We're targeting the same industries, advanced manufacturing, information technology and security, aviation and aerospace, maritime repair, healthcare, and financial services. Rather than focusing on individual cities and counties, we should think regionally. If a business locates in Escambia County and creates jobs for people in the city of Pensacola or vice versa, we all share in that win. You know what I call someone who lives in a neighboring county and comes to eat downtown? I call that person a customer. We should encourage government and business to partner across the region to promote the development of a capable workforce and solid infrastructure. When we cooperate and leverage our assets as a region, we are stronger. Navy Federal Credit Union is a great example of everyone working together to create an enormous win. Navy Federal Credit Union, thank you for believing in Pensacola. Thank you for the jobs and thank you for the optimism you create in our community. It is critical to our future that we get back our share of tax dollars we send to Tallahassee and Washington. I have worked tirelessly to build relationships in Tallahassee and Washington, and no one has worked harder to put those dollars to work right here at home. These monies pay for infrastructure and improvements, helping us make major upgrades, but keeping us from raising local taxes. The more amenities our town has, the more attractive it will be to existing businesses, new talent, and more visitors, not to mention the more it adds to our amazing quality of life. Our port, our airport, our hatchery, our shoreline project, demolition of the dilapidated Blunt School, completion of Admiral Mason Park, beautification of Bayfront Parkway, and the list goes on and on. Over $40 million in projects, all from our share of available state and federal dollars. The more we grow, the more tax dollars we send to Tallahassee and Washington. While we want to push our state and nation for sound fiscal policy like we have in Pensacola, I commit to put our share of that money to work right here at home. In a world with rapidly changing technology, Pensacola must ensure that we have the talent needed to strengthen the competitiveness of our workforce, attract quality companies, and higher paying jobs. This is the reason we want to focus on workforce education. Here's what we know. Our region is targeting specific industries. We know we have an excellent probability of attracting advanced manufacturing, information technology, and security aviation and aerospace, maritime maintenance, health care, and financial services. We know the majority of high-paying jobs in our region will be in these industries. If we have the largest and most highly qualified workforce in these industries, businesses in these industries will flock to us. Business follows talent. Our chamber is doing great work. They have commissioned a, a gap analysis for our community from the Haas Center. This is a terrific idea. This valuable data will tell us where we are in terms of our current workforce's skills. It will define our skills and our workforce needed to be competitive in our targeted industries and provide a blueprint for the skills needed to bridge the gap. We can focus our education and training toward the jobs we want. Putting science on the problem lets us target the right education and training to help people get jobs, putting more people to work, giving more people optimism. We do not want to diminish the value of a four-year college degree, but it is not the only path to a successful career. Our chamber, Workforce Escarosa, our universities, and George Stone Technical Center all stand ready to help us offer education and training with good jobs waiting at the finish line. Imagine knowing up front, if you study machining or nursing, there will be a high paying job waiting for you. If you get a degree in computer science, there will be employers competing to hire you. Optimism. 
Matching education and training with our targeted industries just makes good sense. There are funds from BP and state dollars to help pay for workforce education. I pledge to push workforce education forward by collaborating with businesses, the chamber, community, county, and state agencies, and educational facilities to implement training that puts our citizens to work. I pledge to support workforce education and work diligently to recruit employers and jobs in these targeted industries. Our government's business processes must be transparent and ensure everyone has an opportunity to compete on a fair and level playing field. My job is creating prosper prosperity for everyone. We can't grow and bring new opportunities to our community if we remain a closed system. We want our existing businesses to thrive and we want to bring new businesses and new jobs to Pensacola. The two are not mutually exclusive. Healthy competition is a positive thing. It brings forth risk takers and innovators. We have a new generation of entrepreneurs, young people who have lived across the nation and are bringing their ideas home, home to create building, a new creative class of young people who just want the door thrown open to them to give them a chance. We want to encourage these entrepreneurs. When people choose our community, they bring their talent and resources with them. They become a part of the fabric of our community. They become local. I can think of a couple that adopted our community. They have become one of the greatest investors and philanthropists this community has ever known. I want to acknowledge these fine people tonight. Thank you, Quint and Rishi Studer. Thank you for choosing to make Pensacola your home. Our government's business processes must present a level playing field. It must be blind to favoritism, sentiment, and status. We must protect and honor the level playing field our processes establish. There is optimism and fairness. The city of Pensacola has incredible assets. Pensacola International Airport is the city's greatest economic development engine. Site selection certification is in process. This qualifies us for consideration by decision makers in our targeted industries. The airport commerce park is ramping up. This expansion allows for aerospace industries to relocate, expand, or establish their operations into our airport. This will also attract MROs, companies performing maintenance, repair, and overhaul of aircraft, emphasizing businesses in our targeted industries with high paying jobs. This requires operating our airport as a well-honed business. We have delved into our airport operations, sharpened our pencils, and lowered expenses. We have competitively bid out expiring service contracts, saving hundreds of thousands of dollars. We are now turning our focus to increasing non-airline revenues. Remember, every dollar we make at the airport is a dollar less Pensacola International Airport has to charge airlines, who then charge the customer. This is a dollar for dollar relationship. This is of enormous importance as we compete for more air routes into the city and for international carriers. We have room to grow at our airport. We are thrilled to have Southwest Airlines' first inaugural flight scheduled for November 3rd of this year. Southwest present expands Pensacola International Airport's routes through Houston and Nashville, making Pensacola more accessible to business and tourists across the nation. Optimism. The city has been able to partner with Escambia County, as well as an independent utility authority to transfer over 100 vehicles from diesel to compressed natural gas, a fuel that is cheaper, cleaner, and most importantly, produced right here in America. Through this partnership, we've built two CNG fueling stations with a third that will be completed this December. We'll eventually open to up to corporate fleets and private vehicles. This gives us a competitive edge in recruiting businesses and bringing more jobs. 
We must take our shared prosperity west. The west side of our city should have just as many beautification projects as other parts of our city. In the next two months, the city will open two new state-of-the-art community centers, Woodland Heights and Legion Field. In addition to this investment, we will awaken the west side redevelopment plan. More landscaping, sidewalks, street lights, and traffic calmers will be added to the west side. Retail and amenities follow rooftops. Our rooftops and surroundings on the west side have been too long neglected. I will work with businesses, community agencies, and developers to encourage development of affordable, quality housing on vacant lots, as well as to revitalize existing homes. I need the voice and wisdom of the whole community. Inclusion of members from the west side on our city boards is so important. These boards influence policy and give me invaluable advice. Our city will be offering workshops and working with the local media to get the word out when city board positions become available. The surest way upward is for all of us to grow together. You heard me talk about how to bring economic optimism to all our citizens. But optimism is bigger than just jobs. Optimism can only happen when people have safe neighborhoods and peace of mind that security brings. Everyone has the right to feel safe at home. We have worked with Chief Simmons on solutions to address crime. Together and through enforcement partnerships, we have made some headway. Our police department has partnered with local, state, and federal agencies on an illegal gun task force to des design to improve our investigative capabilities. Over 175 arrests have been made and over 350 illegal guns have been recovered. Additionally, the use of data-based intelligence has enabled our officers to target areas and individuals responsible for violent crimes. Our efforts have resulted in a 14% reduction in nonviolent crime and a 12% reduction in violent crime this year compared to 2012. We have also seen a 40% reduction in residential burglaries during the same time frame. We will not allow crime to keep our community hostage. This is not an insurmountable problem. It can be overcome. We need to be cautious about negativity. Negativity becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. We don't want to sweep the crime conversation under the carpet. But our community needs to hear more about the successful people living and working on our west side. The city will be instituting a roundtable to address violence. We will engage in open and frank dialogue and look for ideas and strategies that can create a clear direction for the future. We must have everyone at the table. City government, county government, law enforcement, the school district, business leaders, neighborhood associations, ministers, and residents. There is no silver bullet, but I am willing to start this difficult conversation. One thing is sure, our community is going to have to take ownership of our safety. We are going to have to do this together. Across this country, corporate America, our military, and manufacturing are challenged to deliver key services with fewer resources and fewer people. Government has had to do the same. Since my time in office, our city budget has been reduced by nearly $30 million. My first year in office, we made a lot of changes to streamline the city government and run it more like a business. We consolidated departments, cut the number of high paid department heads, and reduce the number of city employees. I pass those savings on to citizens by cutting the property tax millage rate by five and a half percent. We also implemented an Employee Award of Excellence program, a new incentive program to encourage employees to be creative and to find new efficiencies and cost savings. When I took office, Pensacola was facing a lot of challenges. Pension costs had gotten way out of control. 
What we owed in future pension payments had grown to more than $100 million. And the city was spending more on pensions each year than it had collected in ad valorem taxes. We hear stories every day about cities going bankrupt across America and missing pension payments because their pension payments were far too high. Last year, we were able to accomplish landmark pension reform through new deals with two of the city employee unions. These deals will save the city nearly $15 million in future pension costs and have put the city on track to get out of the pension business altogether. My time in office has been an incredible learning experience. I've grown as a leader and as a public servant. Tonight, I redouble my commitment to you. I will relentlessly pursue economic development. Supporting job creation and job creators in our targeted industries. Ensuring we get back our share of tax dollars from Tallahassee and Washington. Promoting workforce education in our targeted industries. Pushing transparent, streamlined business processes. Maximizing existing city assets and exploiting Pensacola International Airport as an economic development engine, reducing crime, and taking our shared prosperity west. We will move forward with respect for each other and a shared vision of prosperity and safety for all citizens. Optimism will take us upward. Good night and God bless Pensacola.